Hi everyone, welcome to the last session of the Tiger Academy, four possible risks for listed companies. In the previous lesson, you learned about some risks of investing in US stocks, including systematic and unsystematic risk. In this lesson, you're going to learn about four kinds of risks that may occur with listed companies. Number one, unexpected suspension of share trading. The first type of risk is the suspension of share trading. Here, we should make a distinction between two concepts. The suspension of trading in stocks is called suspension, and the suspension of trading in the broader market is called circuit breaker. There are generally three reasons for suspension in share trading. First, the company is about to announce important news and by halting or delaying trading, investors are given time to assess the impact of that news before trading resumes. Second, pricing action is too volatile causing trading to be suspended in a particular stock. If the share price rises or falls too quickly within a five minute period, it can cause a suspension in trading in that stock for five minutes. The purpose is to give traders the chance to fully consider whether the pricing activity is reasonable. Exchanges usually use two types of suspensions to keep investors from losing more money when a stock's price changes quickly and drastically. In addition to suspensions imposed by exchanges, the third category is a trading suspension imposed under SEC rules. This type of suspension can last for 10 days or more, and action may even be taken to revoke the registration of subject securities. For example, in 2020, due to financial fraud, trading in shares of Luck & Coffee was suspended for one and a half months from April 6th to May 20th at the request of the SEC. Generally, it can be said that a suspension of trading imposed by the SEC is more serious in nature than that imposed by an exchange. For example, a lack of accurate information about a company's latest operations or problems with stock trading, including potential market manipulation by insiders, could lead to SEC oversight a trading suspension. In addition to suspension of trading in the shares of a particular company, there can also be a suspension of trading in a broader market. This is known as a circuit breaker. The original intention of a market circuit breaker mechanism was to prevent flash crashes like the one that occurred in 1987 and to protect the overall market from violent fluctuations. Circuit breakers can be imposed at three levels. When the market falls by 7%, the level one circuit breaker is triggered. When the market falls by 13%, the level two circuit breaker is triggered. When the market falls by 20%, the level three circuit breaker is triggered. In the level one or level two circuit breakers are triggered between 9.30 and 1525 EST, all market trading will be suspended for 15 minutes. Trading halts will not be imposed after 1525 EST. If the level three circuit breaker is triggered at any time during the trading day, all trading will be halted until the opening of the market the next trading day. Number two, delisting risk. Now that you understand the trading suspension rules, Let's talk about the risk of delisting that exchange-traded companies can face. Delisting refers to the removal of a company's securities from the stock exchange on which it is listed either voluntarily or punitively. It is worth noting that regulations of major exchanges regarding delisting are not uniform. For example, the rules of the New York Stock Exchange say that if the price of a security closes below $1 for 30 consecutive trading days, the exchange can begin the delisting process. If the company wishes to remain listed, an application for rectification can be filed and the exchange will then monitor the company's financial progress to ensure its goals are met in a timely manner. If the company doesn't respond to a notice of delisting within 10 business days, the exchange will move quickly to carry out the decision. The delisting of companies can generally be divided into two types. One is permanent delisting from an exchange, in which case investors will most likely lose all of their money. There is also a type of delisting wherein the company moves the listing of its shares to the over-the-counter market following bankruptcy or delisting from a major exchange. The OTC sector is also known as the pink sheets due to the color of the paper that the quotations from the stocks listed there were once printed on. The pink sheets have a very low barrier to listings for companies and so it is a popular choice for many companies following delisting from a larger exchange. If the company chooses to relist its shares on the OTC, the stock in hands of shareholders will still have value. The OTC sector, however, does not have strict requirements for the disclosure of company information, and so transparency is greatly reduced. 
making it very difficult for shareholders to get information. At the same time, the liquidity in the OTC market is also greatly reduced compared with the main board, and as a result, the risk of trading in this market can be very high. Number three, bankruptcy risk of listed companies. The third possible risk for a listed company is bankruptcy. A company may choose a Chapter 7 or a Chapter 11 filling when declaring bankruptcy as provided for in the US Bankruptcy Code. So what's the difference between the two filings? In fact, which chapter a company chooses to file under can make a huge difference to the fortunes of its investors. If a company invokes Chapter 11 for a debt restructuring, the bankrupt company can continue to operate as usual, the company's management can continue to be responsible for its daily business, and its stocks and bonds can continue to be traded in the market. However, all major business decisions of the company must be approved by the bankruptcy court, and the company must also file a report with the SEC. Of course, the company can also choose to invoke Chapter 7 for the asset liquidation. In this case, all the company's businesses must be stopped immediately. The bankruptcy estate custodian will dispose of the company's assets and the proceeds will be used to repay the company's debts, including debts to creditors and investors. At this point, your stock certificate is likely to become a piece of waste paper because if the bankruptcy court determines that the debtor is insolvent, that is, the debt is greater than its assets, the shareholder's investment will most likely never be recouped. Number four, privatization risk of listed companies. The final risk that we'll talk about is the privatization of a public company. Some time ago, Elon Musk sent Twitter a non-binding privatization offer in which he offered to buy all of Twitter's common stock for $54.20 per share in cash. Based on that price, the acquisition value of Twitter would be as high as $43 billion. Once the transaction is completed, Twitter's common stock will have its registration terminated pursuant to Section 12 the Securities Exchange Act of 1934 and will be delisted from the New York Stock Exchange. While marveling at Musk's deep pockets, many investors want to understand what going private would mean, including how it will affect their Twitter stock holdings. So let's talk about that. Privatization is a special circumstance under which a company's shares are delisted. It's a special type of merger and operation in the capital market. The biggest difference between it and other types of mergers and acquisitions is that its goal is to remove the company's shares from a publicly traded exchange and for it to become a private company. To put it bluntly, a major shareholder buys back all of the shares of the minor shareholders and then applies for delisting, thus becoming a private company held by the acquiring shareholder. Is privatization a good thing or a bad thing for shareholders? Actually, it depends on the price at which the company is taken private. What are the conditions under which you would sell your stock to a major shareholder? Of course, it's said that everyone has their price. If a major shareholder takes out a wad of cash and waves it in front of your face, offering a big premium to the current trading price of the stock, wouldn't you take it? Conversely, if the price being offered is too low, minority shareholders may sue to stop the acquisition, and the final outcome of the privatization will become uncertain. Take Twitter as an example. On April 25, 2022, the Twitter board announced that it had reached an agreement with Musk to accept an all-cash offer of $54.20 per share. The offer represented a premium of more than 38% over the price of Musk's own shareholdings, valuing Twitter at $44 billion. The battle for the most influential social media platform in the world has thus reached its climax. Looking back at the event between Musk's announcement of the acquisition and the confirmation of the board of directors, Twitter's stock price rose 10.2% proof that a reasonable acquisition price has a driving effect of the stock price and that it can be a good thing for investors who are long. But what if the privatization of a listed company is announced while you're shorting the stock? Well, that means you're just out of luck. When the acquisition deal is announced, all open short positions will be silently liquidated because the original lenders of the shares are going to want them back so that they can tender them on the sale of the company. As there are no restraints placed on the original long holders of the shares, they will be recalled by your broker, resulting in the forced liquidation of your short position. Those are four kinds of risks that may occur with listed companies. I hope you'll study them so that if you encounter one of them, you'll be able to deal calmly with the situation and take the necessary steps to resolve it. Well, that's it for today's class. Now let's review. Unexpected suspension of share trading, delisting risk of listed companies, bankruptcy risk of listed companies, 
Privatization Risk of Listed Companies. Congratulations! You've completed Tiger Trading's U.S. Stock Introductory Course. Our tour of the U.S. stock market is coming to an end. I'll now briefly summarize the key content of the four chapters to help you better understand what we've covered. Chapter 1, Investment Basics. This chapter explains why you should learn about stocks. In this chapter, we learn the background of stocks as an investment and also about the U.S. stock market. Through this chapter, you can quickly understand how you make money with stocks and why they're the best choice for long-term investment. In addition, you can also become familiar with the main trading markets for U.S. stocks, the most famous three main indices, and the star companies within the four main industries. Chapter 2, U.S. Stock Market Practices. This chapter explains how to operate with U.S. stocks. Through the practical instruction of the Tiger Trade app, you've gained a lot of basic knowledge about U.S. stock trading. You now know how to open a margin account and understand the advantages and disadvantages of going long and short. At the same time, the five most common ways to place an order will not be difficult for you, and it will be easier to read market quotations, conduct trades, read hotspots, and check announcements on the Tiger Trade app. Chapter 3, Advanced Investment Strategies. This chapter explains you how to develop a stock strategy. After these three lessons, you now have a good grasp of stock investment strategies and macro elements such as policy and capital that must be known in order to operate the stock market. In addition, you learned how to sift through industries to find high quality and well-priced listed companies to invest in and how to ultimately use technical line indicators to get better trading prices. Chapter 4, Investment Risk. This chapter explains you how to face the risks of investing. Returns in the stock market are often accompanied by risk. This chapter explains the risks of penny stocks, margin trading, and investment itself, but also gives you a good working understanding of four types of risks that may occur with listed companies and how to deal with them. The experience will make you more confident when facing such risks in the future. I hope that these lessons will give you the confidence to get started with US stock investing. Continue to learn advanced strategies and skills and to understand the trading screen of the Tiger Trade app. At the same time, be prepared for the risks you may encounter on the road to trading profits. I'll see you in the next class.